So what is going on dammers, my name is Meho and welcome to your 23rd Angular 6 tutorial in which we're gonna take a look at how to set up MongoDB for registration purpose for our Angular 6 app. So let's get started. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at how to install MongoDB first if you don't have it then installing something known as mongoose which just provides a semantic way of doing stuff with mongodb because mongodb as a whole is uh you know you can just store pretty much anything without any schema or anything like that defined then we can also set up schema for this mongodb thing so if you do not have mongodb what you need to do first is you need to install it and if you're on Mac, it's pretty easy. You just have to go to Google uh, or you just have to go to um, your command line and write brew install MongoDB and it would get it for you. For Ubuntu and Windows, you can just pretty much do a quick Google search like uh, MongoDB on um, Ubuntu, something like this and MongoDB on Windows. And you can follow any one of these links and uh, the guides would be pretty much simple for you to follow along and you would have mongodb set up with that being done what you can do is you can actually go to your terminal um your terminal where's it there you have and when you write mongo you should uh, actually mongo is not running right now so if you just run it and then if you write mongo here you should see your mongo client open so you can um, do stuff like show dbs and all that stuff so it just shows you all of the available databases you have created in mongo now once that is set up what we want to do is actually install mongoose in our server folder so um, here's our server folder and if we just actually let me just started node mod instead of node so that it just restarts every time we make some changes so if i do like npm install mongoose and save it so it will install mongoose as a dependency in our server and uh, one last thing which is optional you can just work with the mongo client here as well but what i use is a client called robo 3d this thing so this client would be used to actually um, see the mongo as a gui right instead of command line you can see data in gui so that is helpful if you just want you can install it i guess it's available cross-platform so that should not be a problem so anyways with our mongo setup what we're gonna do is uh, uh, we're gonna set up our mongodb connection here so i'm gonna say constant mongoose is require mongoose right and then i'm gonna say that mongoose should use a promise library which is inbuilt inside node so by this we're just switching mongoose from callbacks to promises right and who doesn't like promises so i'm just gonna say mongoose.connect uh, mongodb localhost our port number is for mongo um where is it and what the heck is this oh actually i guess we install a package that's why it just restarted everything anyways so um our mongoose port is running on things running on 27017 there we go and once we do that um we can actually await for this as well await or rather we can just um, you know create a then call here then error mongoose up something like this because I'm sure pretty much that there's no error so if we take a look now inside our index you can see that server is listening at one two three four and mongoose is up as well so what we actually want to do is 
not only just connect to Mongo but to a specific database. So let's just say I'm gonna name this Angular DB, something like that. So now we are connecting to this Angular DB and we're saying when we are connected that Mongoose is up. All right. The next thing is that we need to create some schemas. So I'm just gonna create a new folder, schemas. And we can just organize this later on to the standard uh, file structure we have. But right now, let's just keep it that way. Users JS. So I'm just going to say uh, constant schema is require mongoose. And we can just enclose it something like this. And I'm just going to say um, constant user is new schema and this would consist of a schema which the user follows which the user object our um, user collection will follow so i'm just gonna say for now is email as string and password as a string and let's just say user can add a code of something so that's a string right all right so once we have created this model uh, what we want is uh, we want to export it right so i'm just going to say module.exports and actually let's just create a variable here first so we're going to say uh, const user uh, we already have that so i'm just going to change this to user schema and user is mongoose.model model and I guess we need mongoose anyway. So let's just create something like this. So we have mongoose.model and here goes the name of our collection. So that should be user. And uh, what I want here is the user schema object which we just created. All right. So what it does, what it does is that when we are creating the schema, it's mapping the data we are storing in the database and uh, it's mapping that to JavaScript. So what happens is that Mongo would send the data to Mongoose, Mongoose would match it against its schema and would directly populate into a JavaScript object. So that's how it works. So what I'm exporting is the schema. Uh, now I can import it anywhere in the file and uh, directly make some calls retrieving data adding to data using the schema so that mongoose does all of that stuff under the hood <clears throat> what we can do another thing is that instead of code being just string we can say it's type a string and a default value for this code thing is that um, you have no code right so <clears throat> you can specify default values and all that stuff so as long as you're using this model to make changes retrieve changes to your database you are in sync with what mongoose thinks you're doing all right and you should probably make use of mongoose every time it really makes life a lot easier so what we have is that we have the schema ready and now inside index.js um, or actually it would just create a lot of mess here I just want to separate files but I'm not really sure how to keep it simple right now we can actually just name it from schemas to models we can actually create a controllers folder here as well but I just don't want to do that um, in this video uh, we're gonna probably um, use that in some other videos so um, what I'm actually going to do let's just include it here only so I'm gonna say user is require models and we have users here right so what we have is module.expose as user so this user is a model and what i can do let's just say right here instead of api slash register what we can say is api slash login and request response and it will again contain username username and password inside the body so now I can say user dot find one let's just say 
with username as username and password as password and if we are able to find uh, we can just make it async function now making this async allow us to make use of the await keyword which simplifies the code so i can say my result is await user.find1 and i'm just gonna say if result is a false value that means um, user um, login is incorrect otherwise we have a user and we can create a session as well now we were doing sessions with php but here we would make need to make use of express sessions and so pretty much i can just say uh, make a session and uh, set user to logged in just like that so um what we can do is uh, right now just say console.log um incorrect details otherwise we can just say console.log um, logging you in right okay so now if we take a look inside the robomongo client so what we can do here is i can just create a database with the name angular 6 angular db which i said and we don't have any collection so what we can do is just manually create a collection right now otherwise mongo would automatically create itself it itself mongoose will automatically create anyway when you insert data right so it will just create data as well as collection so uh, what we want to do is create a user collection create it user or users uh, we have to take a look it's user so let's just get rid of this and create another collection named user um, let's just name it user hit create now we have this as an empty collection right now so what i can do is just manually insert a record here i can say um what we had in schema email right as mayhole at the rate one dot com something like that password we can just keep it one two three four five and quote since um, it is defined by schema we have to put it here um, some random garbage right and hit save so you can see that we have a record here uh, which follows our mongoose schema so what i want to do is uh, actually if we take a look um, inside our code here we are actually querying for this thing so what we can do is actually we can make use of um, uh, a tool called paw paw in mac and windows equivalent is uh, postman and what this tool does is that it allows you to perform http requests and test your apis within this interface so you do not need to create open the browser and do all, all sort of javascript stuff to send json and all that stuff so what we want to do is actually test our api so we are going to test api slash login here and inside my json i'm going to add something like let's just remove this my username as or what we had username or email i believe we had um uh, we are querying for username password i guess we should switch that to email or should we yeah email and password right and here as well so we're gonna send an email as mayhole at the rate one dot com what we had and a password as uh, what we had one two three four five right so once we do that we are posting to this we get this you can just console dot log email and password as well here just in case you want to see we are getting the result we also want to console log the result and that is it so now if we hit enter a connection refused fair enough connection refused because rest has already been declared 
Oh, okay. This is response, response, and response dot send. Nothing, just in case. Yep. So now if we hit it, we get a K. But inside terminal, we get incorrect details. Okay. So uh, we are querying for um, email and password inside our user model. So if we take a look inside Robo 3D, we can see our email is in fact mehuladderid1.com and our password is in fact 12345. Let's just try to actually let's just try it to change the code here just the email and if we hit it now actually it's just not running the server we hit it now we get mehuladderid1.com but our record is still null I just this is correct okay so after debugging uh, what I see is that uh, we are we have created this redundant collection here user it should be actually users that's right so I can just drop this collection here and inside this collection users we can just delete this object as well and inside this object we can edit this document to say mehul at the rate 1.com and 12345 save it right and now uh, what we have is that if we just get rid of this find one email and password get rid of this get rid of uh, this and now if we take a look uh, what we have is that our mongoose is up now if i hit this inside our console we get logging you in for the correct values but for incorrect values if we hit this you can see the, that we get incorrect details so um, our mongo is linked for login for registration we're gonna do that really quick with the form we are getting we just need to populate this stuff and actually we can just do it straight away if you wait a little so you can say await user dot insert or we can just say user is new user and we can just say email password just like that and finally we can say um, result is result is actually this should be result result await user dot save and we can just console dot log result which is result returns us the original object so if we go to api slash register and we have email and password fields here and uh, we just say something like one two three and same password hit enter connection is refused because uh, we are not making this async i can just return send the json the result as well so now if we send this you can see that we get a json response and we get inside json response we get exactly how the data would be stored and we can see the same thing inside our mongoose inside our database as well you can see that we have another record here so uh, registration and login stuff are good to go on the back end and the database part with minimal or no validation we're going to add that later on the only thing left now is to link this stuff with front end. So we're going to do that in the next video. So that is all for this one. And I'll see you then in the next video. And one more thing. If you like this video, then don't forget to subscribe and press the bell icon to receive instant notifications.